Hello everybody, quadrojetpower.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about the idle circuit. Actually, uh, we'll go through the, the different calibration circuits of the quadrojet, starting with the idle circuit, the main circuit, and then the secondary circuit. So the idle circuit's the most confusing um, component of the quadrojet for most people. Keep in mind, every quadrojet produced every code stamp is a unique calibration for a specific application. And that's the reason quadrojets don't swap well between applications. If you grab a carburetor off of a 454 pickup, try to put it on your 350, it, it likely won't run correctly. Also, the, the biggest thing that we see is the calibration and idle problems after an engine rebuild, you increase compression, you put a cam in there, uh, tighter lobe separation, higher lift, you reduce the vacuum um, for idle, and it causes idle problems. That's probably the primary reason most quarter jets get thrown away or replaced with some generic uh, aftermarket product that they can get off the shelf, because the idle circuits on those are are extremely rich and they're designed to pretty much run on anything. So the quadrajet is specific for the application and it's not a problem to change uh, once you understand what you're doing and, and what all needs to be done. So we're going to try to go through this pretty quickly. Um, the, idle, the idle circuit for the quadrajet starts, I'm going to put the body up here. So in the jet wells Underneath the jets, there's passages that bring fuel up through the restriction in the idle tube. Now, the idle tube looks like this. It has a collar that goes in from the top. It's driven in and is smooth there. The restriction's at the bottom. This is the first restriction in the idle circuit. So when you're idling, the vacuum signal with the throttle blades closed is pulling vacuum from underneath the, the base of the carburetor. You're gonna pull fuel up through this first restriction through the top of the idle pickup tube. It comes across the main body and goes down through the down channel restriction. The down channel restriction is a little cup that's pressed in, has an orifice in it. I don't know how well you can see that. The orifice size in there is very critical, just like the size of the restriction on the idle pickup tube. On this particular carburetor, this is a early 70s Chevrolet carburetor. This is a very common method. All of the carburetors, all of the quarter jets have two idle air bleeds. On this type, some are in the air horn. On this type, it's in the main body. You, there's a passage right here. I don't know if you can see that. This passage is the upper idle air bleed. That lets air get mixed with the fuel as it goes down through the carburetor, through the main body, and comes to the, to the bottom. It, in the bottom of the primary side on the quadrajet, is a, is a hole. This is a lower idle air bleed. This allows air to be mixed with the, with the fuel going into the base. So the fuel comes out of the hole here and it goes into the base plate through the holes in the base plate. These intersect with, I uh, hope you can see this, there's a transfer slot on each side. Typically the, the primary throttle blade is gonna be covering most of this, but the most of the fuel and air for the idle are gonna come out the hole where the idle adjustment screw is coming out. So, this hole is another calibration point that, that we always measure. Now, for a, uh, one, one other place, sorry, I got a little off. Bi idle bypass air is on most quarter jets as well. This hole here on each side is what comes up through. It pulls air 
into the system through these slots then up through the top so it allows air to come in and that's why it'll idle with the throttle blades closed is pulling air uh, filtered air through those points so for the quadrajet when you have a camshaft and you have a lower idle vacuum signal the quadrajet can't pull enough fuel through and that's why most people have to turn up the idle speed and it causes a nozzle drip down the primary side it's not running on the idle circuit so you want to keep the throttle blades mostly closed uh, on idle and when you have a modified camshaft the main modifications you have to do is increase the orifice size of the idle pickup tube and the down channel restriction to allow more fuel to come through with the lower vacuum signal. Another thing that you likely have to do on most is increase the size of the exit hole behind the, behind the mixture screws. Uh, that combination there is what can help an engine idle with a quadrajet with a big cam or um, higher compression, lower vacuum signal at idle. Those are key components for the for the idle circuit. Quarterjet Power sells all of these components. We sell the the uh, calibration um, drill bit set, so you can calibrate a lot of this yourself if you'd like. Um, so increasing increasing the pickup tube, the down channel restrictions uh, will help idle for an engine with a with a camshaft. And the idle tubes are on each side, down channel restrictions are on each side, the upper idle air bleeds, lower bleeds are on both sides of the of the quadrajet. Now, that's, uh, that is the idle circuit explained for the quadrajet. Now the primary circuit as uh, it's it's fairly simple. You have your jets that go in to the main body. The jets are in the spot, and then we have the primary rods, which are on the power piston. So the primary rods set into the jets. There's a spring under the power piston that'll raise and lower the jet. And most of these early primary rods have a 26 thousandths tip, and they're, they're measured on the top side, and that's based on the number. This is a 43B rod. Uh, so it's 43 thousandths at the top of the taper, but the, the power tip on the end is 26 thousandths. So with the jet uh, in, at idle, it's going to sit sit down and block more fuel from coming at full throttle when there's no vacuum. Power piston rises, so the 26 thousandths tip is, is what's the only restriction in the jet size. So this being a 73 jet, uh, you They'll, they'll match up and that'll allow the flow. It does have a minor effect on the idle uh, as the fuel comes through the jet to feed the idle. So richening this system will increase a little bit of fuel for the idle circuit itself. Uh, to richen the primary side, you can go up in jet size, down in the primary rod size to get a richer mixture. Keep in mind, all of the tips are 26 thousandths so to richen it at wide open throttle for the primary side, you'd go to a larger jet. The, um, the secondary side has the hanger with the secondary rod. The secondary, secondary jets are fixed in the main body. They're, they're orifices that are pressed in originally and sealed. The tip and length of the tip on the secondary rod is what measures how, how it works. So if we get, I'm going to pull a, a new one here. So this is a DA. This secondary rod, you can see how they're tapered. They sit down in the, in the pressed in jet and this has a 44 thousandths tip. So there are many, many different secondary rods that were available and the length of the tip and the size of the tip is what measures how quickly the fuel comes and how much fuel comes through. This is a medium length tip. There are short, there's medium, and then there's long tips. So a long tip would bring fuel in quicker. 
So for poor performance application, you want a medium or a long tip. Uh, for just a cruiser, you might want a shorter tip. We have new and used primary or secondary, primary and secondary rods, quarterjetpower.com. The hanger is what hangs from the air horn. The rods, secondary rods, hang into the hanger, go through, and then they the hanger rises and lowers based on the secondary air valves and how they open. So that's that's what operates the secondary side and meters the fuel for the secondary when the secondaries are engaged. Pretty easy to, to change the secondary rods. That can be done from outside of the carburetor at any time. Uh, so that's pretty common. This is the secondary circuit. It affects the, the secondary side only so if you're lean at wide open throttle or rich at wide open throttle you'd want to change the secondary rods to be able to accommodate that to, to get within your range uh, that overall explains several of the primary idle secondary side calibration points for the quarter jet there's there's a lot more to it um, you have uh, you have main air bleeds that also mix fuel uh, on most quarter jets. Some of those Chevrolet trucks have a single air bleed in the air horn. This one is like most. It has an air bleed on each side here, and then you have the main air bleed on each side here in the primary side. These in the early Chevrolets, these were about 120 thousandths. Um, this was Chevrolet's way to lean the, the primary mixture for um, for pollution stuff that was going on in the early 70s. Uh, most of them will have a, a restriction in these. All of them except the Chevrolets will have a brass restrictor, uh, down channel restriction, or um, sorry, the main air bleed restriction that would be pressed into there. We also have a screw in type uh, that can screw into these, these holes. So. Uh, the Chevrolets did not have that restriction in there, but that mixes with fuel that requires these large ones like this require much larger jets to be able to get the same mixture if you have a restriction in here. I like to think of it. My son taught me this years ago uh, to how to think you've got so much capacity for air and fuel mixture going through the circuit. The more air you allow, the less fuel is in there. Um, so if you don't need to richen you can restrict the air bleeds, the main air bleeds, uh, and use a smaller jet to be able to get more fuel, less air in that mixture. Um, we can provide calibrations. We can do all, we have all the components that you need for all that. I hope that helps. The idle is the main thing that we see being an issue uh, for people when they put a camshaft or, or modify their engine. Uh, we provide calibration services. If you tell us your engine combination, what your carburetor is, if you have the calibration points or if it's been altered, let us know those. If it's a factory calibration, we have the data on most of those ourselves. We've collected that over the many, many years we've been building these. Uh, so we can help you calibrate one uh, for any engine setup that you may have. So just uh, you can email us at info at quarterjet power. You can go to quadrajetpower.com, message us, uh, or take a look at our kits and all of our components. We sell it all there. Um, hope you like this video. Uh, if you would, please share. Please like the video. Please uh, subscribe to our channel. Push the little bell so you get information next time that we uh, have another video that we release. You'll get notified of that. We appreciate uh, your business. Thanks for watching. Uh, have Y'all have a great day. Enjoy your quadrajet waterjetpower.com. Thank you.